Now we're going to discuss the different types of body composition models. And these models are what go into the actual numbers that you get when you measure body composition. And so this is kind of the behind the scenes of the numbers you give your, uh, your clients, right? So this is kind of good knowledge to have. So when people ask you, okay, well, how did you come up with that body composition number? You have some idea. So there are two primary models that are used that in our field, the two component model and the multi-component model. The two component model is the more simplistic model. And it basically says body mass is made up of fat mass and fat free mass. And there's a lot of assumptions that go into what fat free mass is. The multi-component model is a little bit more detailed. Similarly, it says that body mass is fat mass plus fat free mass, except for it actually measures components of what that fat free mass is made up of, which includes protein, water, and mineral. So in many cases, usually what we use nowadays is the multi-component model um, rather than the two component model to come up with that actual number of what is their body fat percentage. Let's spend a little bit more time on each. So the two component model is dependent on assumptions that are made that are basically saying we think there are consistencies um, in characteristics, so age and sex for individuals. So it doesn't matter um, you know, who you are, if you're of this age or if you're of this sex, we're gonna assume this about you. And this can be problematic for people who have slightly different body compositions than people who are of the same age as them or the same sex as them. Um, this is similarly an issue with people who have different hydration statuses. So again, the two component model is not ideal um, and it was what kind of was first used and most of what we use nowadays is a three component model. To provide you with some other details about the assumption, it assumes, right, in this model that the density of fat for every individual is 0.901 grams per cubic centimeter. It also assumes that the density of fat-free body is 1.1 gram per cent cubic centimeter. We know that's obviously not the case for everyone, but in this model, that's what they use, okay? It, individuals, they also assume that individuals only differ um, in reference body in fat, so basically, Fat is going to be different per person in this model, but they assume the exact same for fat free body. Okay. And this is that reference body. So basically that second bullet, that fat free body in the two component models, it's assuming that every single person's fat free body is made up of 73.8% water, 19.4% protein and 6.8% mineral. And obviously that's not the case. Okay. And this is a great example. Okay, we know that in African-American men and women, fat-free body density is actually greater, so it's 1.106 grams per cubic centimeter compared to that reference body, right, which is the 1.1 gram per cubic centimeter. Okay, and because of the, and this is happening because they tend to have a higher mineral content um, in their bones. As a result of African-American men and women having a higher fat-free body compared to their reference body, they tend to actually have their uh, percent body fat be underestimated um, when using two component equations. And this is why you're, you're gonna see in lab, this is why it's best to use body fat uh, percentage equations that are specific to that person's um, race as well as age, as well as sex, okay? Um, and usually those happen with the three component models as well. So this is the multi-component model. And this is the one that's a little bit more ideal because it limits the amount of assumptions that are made. So rather than making those assumptions, they actually measure some of these things. So we'll provide information on their hydration status or their actual volume of density or maybe mineralization okay, of their fat-free body. Um, so again, the multi-component model includes that body mass is equal to fat mass plus protein, water, and mineral. Um, and by doing this, it avoids a lot of errors in estimating someone's body fat percentage. Um, and it's probably this the most ideal way. In your book, there's um, some references that you can look at, table 8.2, um, that will show you age, gender, and ethnicity for this. Okay. Um, now we're gonna move on to reference methods for body composition, of which we'll do in the next video.